Good evening YouTube and welcome to the first part of my thoughts about the UK general election 2010. In this video I want to give a sort of overview of the British political situation at the moment. It's going to be by necessity fairly brief, um, but hopefully will give an idea of some of the issues that are at stake at the moment. Um, I'm going to go through briefly um, sort of Labour's um, ten years since 1997, the, the, and the major things that I think they, they've done in that period. Uh, the current economic crisis, the expenses scandal, uh, the electoral system, uh, Gordon Brown, uh, and the, the Conservatives, and then the general election. So to begin with, um, Labour came to power in 1997, May 97. Uh, with Tony Blair leading New Labour. There was a whole other video, or in fact a whole series of PhDs to be done about the genesis of New Labour. But uh, Tony Blair was, was the leader of New Labour in '97 when they came to power after 18 years of rule by the Conservative Party, uh, also known as the Tories. Um, that in, in and of itself was, uh, was historic. So it was 18 years for you know, that the Conservatives have been in, in power and broken. Um, Thatcher came in in 79 um, and then handed over to, to Major in 90. Um, it lasted until 97. I think I've got the dates right there. Um, now, so just that in itself was something. And also the fact that the Labour Party had become electable again. Um, by the end of um, Jim Callaghan's tenure, it, it, it was starting to become unelectable, and then Michael Foote became the leader, um, who was again very much from the left of the party, and you had in 1983 the manifesto which was described as the longest suicide note in history. Um, so what, what are the, the big, apart from that, the big things that the government's done? Now, this is, a hell of a lot has happened in Britain since 97, but so these are just a few things which I think are particularly salient. Um, Devolution. Power has been devolved to Wales, Scotland, London and Northern Ireland. Um, the rest of England is, is still very much centralised, but the UK was uh, one of the most centralised countries in the world. I think I'm right in saying that it was second to North Korea. Um, it went straight from you know, above the municipality was the, the national government. So that's changed somewhat, and there, there are moves for an English Parliament or for greater representation for the English regions. So that, that is a big change. Um, Northern Ireland, continuing the resolution and the improvement of um, the resolution of the Troubles and improving the situation in Northern Ireland. Um, that's something that had been going on for a long time, but was continued under, under Blair and continues under Brown now. Again, a very uh, they, you know a lot has been done under governments of all shades to, to normalise um, the north of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Ulster, call it what you want. Um, the increase in spending from about two thousand, the first few years, um, Labour they wanted to, it, it had to, or it felt it had to maintain a, a reputation, a hard won reputation. Well, it didn't have a reputation of economic competence. It had the opposite. It had to show that it was, it was more competent than the competent and so until 2000 it stayed with conservative spending plans. After 2000 a hell of a lot of money was put into public services and I think it's had a transformational effect. I mean, so it's education, the National Health Service, roads and so on. Um, the, the two largest military foreign policy um, things are Iraq and Afghanistan. I'll do separate videos on those. Obviously both very controversial, um, both at the time, more so Iraq than Afghanistan, but increasingly so about the way that they have been, those wars have been prosecuted. And the response to 9-11. So I think there has been something of, a, of an unwarranted restriction of what might be called civil liberties in the response to 9-11. Now, obviously, that, that's only going things over at the very surface level, and there's much many other things. Okay, next up, the economic crisis. The UK was particularly badly 
affected by the economic crisis for the simple reason that we had a large financial sector. London is a financial cap uh, was a, is a financial capital of the world, and we weren't um, diverse enough. We weren't doing, as Mandy Peter Mandelson put it, we weren't weren't doing enough real engineering instead of financial engineering, and so we were hurt. We've been hurt badly by that. Um, looking at the you know our, our peers in the in the G8 and in Europe and so on, we're not doing too badly now. We're starting to recover. Um, but as I say, we were particularly badly hit, and we did lead. I think it's fair to say in things like quantitative easing uh, with the London conference to to get to try to get everything going again. Um, I, I'm fairly sure that people will look back on Gordon Brown and say actually did a pretty good job on that. Recently we've had an expenses scandal. Um, MPs are allowed to claim um, expenses. Obviously they, they have a house in their constituency um, and but they need to have somewhere to live in London as well. Um, but the expenses system was well, shall we say, rather generous and rather loosely vetted. So you had people claiming for things which, which are just insane. Somebody claiming for moat cleaning, a duck house, and then a whole range of petty things. And this was for people from all parties, um, you know, claiming for a toilet seat and so on and so forth. The big one, the big problem there, though, was what was called flipping. There was, there was tax relief and you could use, uh, you could use, claim mortgage payments and, and all sorts of things. The result is a has been a real a real weakening in the public perception of politicians uh, because of the scandal. Even those who weren't affected, who, who were whiter than white, have been affected by it because of it, 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 is, it was made people so angry. Now Gordon Brown, um, he came in in 2007 um, Immediately, comparisons were made with John Major. John Major uh, came in, I think, I'm fairly sure it was 1990, when Thatcher was sort of ousted. Um, and there were comparisons with Brown coming in after this very strong, charismatic leader, Blair, um, and, and you know, what would happen. Um, there was certainly an uneasiness about how to deal with the legacy of Blair, because Brown was intimately involved in the New Labour project. Um, but equally, I think he wanted to distance himself slightly from particularly the foreign policy aspects and some of the slight preachiness of uh, Tony Blair. And you also had what I would call the woozle that wasn't. There was talk about an election in 2007, maybe in the autumn of 2007, a uh, snap election to um, to give Brown himself a mandate. That didn't happen because he thought he wasn't going to do too well. I bet he wishes he'd gone to the country now. Um, the Conservatives since '97 have been, for the most part, in a bit of a mess. They they've had four leaders, lots of divisions over Europe and so on, but now seem to be relatively united around David Cameron, and are certainly willing to put aside some of their disputes and desires to get back into power. Anyway, that's a very brief overview of where we are. Um, I hope it's of use and of interest. I should say, um, in your interest of full disclosure, that I'm a Labour Party member. I'm going to do my best to be unbiased, um, but so you know where I'm coming from. Um, I'm Ladon Cole. I'll see you next time.